Spirulina's popularity is skyrocketing as companies worldwide churn out 3,000 tons annually, meeting the soaring demand for this superfood. Let's discover how it is made. Producing spirulina on a large scale typically involves several phases, from cultivation to harvesting and processing, all within specialized facilities designed to optimize growth and yield. Spirulina is typically cultivated in controlled environments such as open ponds or closed photobioreactors. Open ponds are shallow, artificial bodies of water where spirulina is grown under controlled conditions of temperature, pH, and nutrient levels. Alternatively, closed photobioreactors provide a more controlled environment, shielding the spirulina culture from external contaminants and allowing precise regulation of environmental factors such as light, temperature, and nutrient concentrations. These systems often utilize LED lighting to provide the optimal spectrum for photosynthesis. The cultivation process begins by inoculating the culture medium with a starter culture of spirulina. This starter culture contains the desired strain of spirulina and serves as the foundation for growth. Under favorable conditions, the spirulina cells multiply rapidly through photosynthesis, utilizing carbon dioxide, sunlight, and nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and trace minerals present in the culture medium. Once the spirulina culture reaches a certain density, typically indicated by the color of the water turning dark green or blue-green, it is ready for harvesting. Harvesting methods vary depending on the cultivation system used. In open ponds, spirulina may be harvested using filtration systems or centrifugation to separate the biomass from the culture medium. In closed photobioreactors, harvesting may involve filtration or centrifugation within the reactor itself. After harvesting, the spirulina biomass is concentrated into a paste or slurry. The paste containing spirulina and water is passed through a special cloth with minute holes. This allows the water to pass through the small holes, but spirulina is not small enough to go through them. This way, a large amount of water is removed from the solution. A worker continuously sweeps the cloth with a spatula and also applies a little pressure on it. This way, he makes way for more spirulina to fall on the cloth, while also ensuring that more water can be removed from the process. The spirulina paste becomes even denser, but the process won't stop until it is turned into a solid. The sweeping is done repeatedly, and then the paste is transferred to a bucket with the help of the spatula. Different strategies are used to dehydrate the spirulina, one of which is to spread it on large tables. Due to a larger surface area, the paste loses water at a rapid rate and it dries off sooner. While this strategy is useful, there is another method to remove the water. In the second method, the concept of pressure is used. The spirulina is kept in bags that allow water to seep out, but spirulina can't go through. Then they are pressed with high pressure, which makes water seep out, and the bags are left with dehydrated spirulina.
After every single tiny drop of water has been squeezed out of the paste, it becomes a solid brittle slab. But it is still not free from moisture trapped inside the spirulina. So the slab is broken down into smaller pieces, which are then fed into a cylinder-like device. This device allows to use pressure to change the slab of spirulina into noodle-like fragments. This gives the spirulina a large surface area, which makes the next step easier. The spirulina noodles are then transferred to several trays, which allow the superfood to dry off. Additional temperature management or even specialized machines may be used to ensure that the spirulina gets dried off evenly. By the time this process ends, the spirulina noodles become solid. This is the finished product. Spirulina, rich in antioxidants and minerals, is ready after a tiring and tedious process of dehydration. The noodles-like dried spirulina is broken down into smaller pieces by hand. Some manufacturers may even process it further to make tablets for easier consumption. This is done by pressing the broken down pieces with a large pressure using specialized machines. However, some people prefer to consume it as granules, and hence, manufacturers sell it as granules as well. As the demand for spirulina continues to surge, numerous companies across the globe are stepping up their production, collectively generating a staggering 3,000 tons per year. If you want to witness the fascinating intricacies of these production lines and delve deeper how these factories work, then you can watch our next videos here.